Dr. Paul here. We're gonna go in and see a young man who says he's having trouble breathing. Of course, breathing is an important thing, so let's go take a look. All right, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. All right, buddy, I like your shirt. You got dinosaurs going on there? Yeah. So, um, I heard you've been having some trouble breathing? You have? What happens when you're having trouble breathing? Well, it's, it's kind of hard. Really? Mm hmm Okay. And how often is that happening? Well, pretty often. Pretty often? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and are there certain things you do that make it harder to breathe? Well, not really. Not really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was gonna ask your dad, because I was chatting with him a little bit before I came in here. Could you tell me sort of what your concerns are? It seems to be after activity, yeah. definitely more induced by heat recently. Okay, and this is a pretty new thing for him. It is, past couple days. Yeah, he's never had this happen before. Nope. All right, and I was chatting with you earlier and there's a little family history, I think, of maybe allergies or asthma. asthma. on my mother's side and yep. I have seasonal allergies. Okay. I think you were mentioning cottonwood. Cottonwood in particular. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we're going to take a listen to your lungs, okay? And, uh, you know, for the viewers, I've already seen this young man, but he was kind enough to let us just kind of show you the process of figuring out what's going on when you're having a hard time breathing. All right. So do you know what this is? Uh, no. That's a stethoscope. Hi. Yeah. It's a, like makes my ears reach over here to your heart. You have a very good heart. Thanks. Yeah. And take a really big breath. Perfect. Again. 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 Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Good job. That was really good breathing. I think practicing before did much better this time. That was awesome. Now, um, we're going to show our viewers what it's like to blow in the that little peak flow machine. Okay, because you did so good at that. So I tell my young patients, I've got a game for you. In fact, he's gonna play it twice. All right, so this, this here is a peak flow meter. And what you're gonna do like we did before is you put your mouth around that mouthpiece, make a nice tight, and blow as hard as you can. And you're gonna see how high you can make that go, okay? Whoa, hold on. Okay, good. Good, one more time. Big one. Okay, good job. So, you can see he got up to about 120, 125. A couple times he popped it up higher. And this is something for uh, parents to know if they're using a peak flow meter, you can cheat by going <coughs> You see, I just popped it all the way to the top. I didn't really move any air. So that's, you gotta watch that. It needs to be a sustained, blow which you did great like and you get as high as you can there are normals for the peak flow and we've already looked up your normal peak flow which was 100 to 200 and you did okay about 100 to 120 so when your peak flow is less than 80 percent of normal so 200 is the normal upper range 80 percent of that would be 160. so if you're below 160 that's a pretty good sign you might be wheezing I didn't hear a lot of wheeze, which by the way, what that sounds like is a squeaky exhale. <laughs> but the thing is for our, our, my favorite patient of the day here, you get your trouble breathing like when you're running or it's hot outside, yep, right? And when I'm riding my own bike. And your own bike, yeah. So exercise induced, like if you, if you work really hard, and this is a brand new thing for you. This is the very first time you've had this problem, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do, I was just demonstrating and showing you um, right here, like air goes down those little tubes and then these are the bronchioles and there's little muscle around those bronchioles that spasms when you get exposed to pollens, dust, Pets, you said you had cats and dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, indoor mold, pollution, cold air. If you're sick, that can do it. And there's yours, exercise. I'm pretty sure that's doing it. And tobacco, of course, we don't like people smoking tobacco. 
Now, if you look back at this picture, when you exercise or ride your bike and you start coughing and feeling like you can't breathe, right? Mm -hmm. Those little muscles are spasming and we're gonna give you a medicine called albuterol and we're gonna actually have the nurse come show you <coughs> how to take that medicine and it'll relax those smooth muscles so you can breathe better. Hi. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now if you're, if, if you have asthma and you're coughing and wheezing for more than a day, you're gonna get inflammation in those little airways and that's where it's very important some doctors are, or even parents will kind of ignore the use of the second medication which is a very weak low dose inhaled steroid it'll take care of that inflammation you may not need it for exercise induced asthma i'm actually not calling this asthma it's your very first episode triggered by probably exercise we're going to see over time we're actually going to check this young man for allergies a immunocap it's a blood test and we're not doing it right this second don't worry not today okay and um we can figure out exactly what's triggering these wheezing episodes if indeed there is a trigger other than exercise. All right, so I'm gonna have the nurse come in here in a minute and teach you how to use an inhaler. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna get an inhaler that looks like this, okay? This is the opti chamber. So what you're gonna do is take this cap off. You're gonna take this cap off of the inhaler that you're going to get. You're going to insert this end into here. Okay? And what we're going to have you do is come stand up. It's just like breathing air in. Yeah. So I'm going to press on this and the medicine's going to go into this chamber. Does it have any uh, taste? No, I don't think so. Nope. Just like breathing air. Okay. So hold on a minute. So I'm going to press on this. Mm -hmm. You're going to put your mouth around this. Put your mouth around it. Put your lip, close your lips on it. Close your lips. I'm gonna press on this. Breathe it in. Okay. You heard that whistle? Mm -hmm. That means you breathe it in. No, that meant you breathe you breathed it in too fast. Oh. So what I want you to do is come here. We're gonna pretend now that I'll do it one more time. So what I'm gonna do, listen to me. I'm gonna press on this. You're gonna have your mouth around this. You're gonna and I'm gonna to count to eight and you're gonna hold your breath and with your mouth still around this. That way I know you're getting the medicine, okay? Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, put your mouth on this. I'm gonna press it. Breathe in slowly. Hold your breath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. Good job. Okay. Good job. So, went, so he's had his puffs, okay? So I'm going to take this out. Now what I want you to do is probably in an hour or so, or maybe half hour, rinse his mouth out. Okay, because we don't want um, any uh, fungus or yeast gr growing in there because of, because of that. We're going to clean this. Okay, so you're going to take this. Let's just come off, yeah, and just clean it. Okay, and that's it. So I'm gonna leave oh, this off. Oh, won't hurt me now. Just to now, when you're older, you'll learn how to just take it in all at once. Okay. Hi. All right. Good deal. Of course, we've already looked in his ears, his throat, checked him out. Everything else is fine. I think we have a little bit of an exercise-induced wheezing in this case. There may be allergies because there's a strong family history for it. And thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.